13 Honest Tips for Traveling Today and in 2021. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining, and joining me for today's conversation via the magic of the internet is special guest Mark from Walter's World. Mark, welcome to the live stream. <laughs> Hey, Chris, thanks for the invitation. It's great to be here. Can't wait to talk about travel next year and if people want to travel this year as well. Absolutely. I am really excited for it. Uh, and I know we got lots of people on the live stream, so I'm looking forward to um, hearing all your questions, hearing what you all think. But today, Mark and I, we're going to be talking about the travel in the age of the pandemic. What's it look like? What some of our tips are to keep you safe and so you can have a good time, whether your next trip uh, is for business or for pleasure. And as we go along the tips, uh, we'll be uh, putting up your insights as well. So, Mark, what's our, what's our first tip? So I think one of the things that's really, really important is, I mean, a lot of people feel pressure to travel or they're not sure if they should travel. I think the biggest tip going forward with travel right now is really only feel only travel if you really feel comfortable, because it doesn't matter if it's going to see grandma, if it's going for work, if it's going for a vacation with the family. If you don't feel comfortable with it, if you don't feel, you know, safe and doing the travel, you're not going to enjoy it. So it might be better to stay home and that's okay. And I, and that's one of the big things I keep telling people is like, look, if you feel comfortable enough to travel now, like we've done, we've done road trips down to the Southeast of the U S we've done the mountain West. We're going to Texas. We we've done a number of trips and, and we've taken the precautions, but it's because we felt, we finally felt comfortable for it. So that's one thing I really got to say is like, if you feel comfortable with it, take the right precautions, you can do it. But if you don't, it's okay. We can, we can travel next year and, and when it's a little bit safer. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's a great perspective. And there's a lot of people say, I'm not I'm not gonna travel till next year. I'm not gonna travel till there's a vaccine. Um, you know, and maybe Kay Barry, maybe Kay Barry doesn't want to fly and Kay Barry says uh, they're walking with their suitcase right now. So that you know that's you, got, you a, gotta practice. You gotta get you gotta back and practice. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna probably pull a muscle or something when I when I get, finally get my luggage back and dragging the suitcase behind me through the airport. <laughs> yeah, for for sure, for sure. And I know uh, I'll say, you know, for me too, it's like, you know, when when we when we look at places that like we're more comfortable with, it's usually places that are more outside that have less people. You know, not the packed mm -hmm. in places. And you know, OC girl, you know, and I often say like, oh, we're gonna go to this place, but you know, we might we might kind of back out if it's just kind of kind of sketchy. You know. Yeah, I mean that that's one of the things we've done on our trips. It's always been more of a national state parks, outdoor kind of adventure kind of stuff, just because you know you're outside and you have a little bit more free space and easier to do the social distancing because social distancing it isn't just six feet in a mask it's also where you go and how you do things so, absolutely but, but what would be one of your tips for uh for getting through this to traveling again yeah absolutely tip number two is to be flexible as you travel and to have a backup plan. You know, in the in today's age, um, things close, attractions close, regulations change, flights get canceled, places that were open aren't open. Uh, and so my recommendation related to being flexible um, would maybe, you know, like if you see a country's opening or a place's opening and there's a certain date, don't bet too much on that date. Yeah, you know, and, and if, you're, if, if you're planning something, right, just maybe be like, hey, we're going to go someplace this week, but have a plan A and a B and a C. I, I think a little bit about travel is uh, the, the journey uh, as much as it is the destination. Yeah, definitely with the, with the flexible side, because you never know. I mean, there stuff happens on trips anyway. I mean, I know for us, one of the big things we recommend for people to do is really consider road trips. And you know, road trips, you know, stuff happens. So you got to be flexible anyway, just like a normal trip, you need to be flexible, like you were saying. I mean, if you look at it, you know, planes, trains, they're still running, but they're not running as often. Like they're not as, you know, it's like in Italy, you can still catch the train, but they're limited number of people that can be on there getting your connections, all these kind of things having to have reservations, it's becoming a lot more complicated. So that's why having doing a road trip, lets you be a little bit more flexible because you decide when we go when we stay. So that's, that's one thing we've really kind of we've done quite a bit of and I know my wife's trying to get me to get an RV or something. And I'm like, no, I do not. Want you're not RV. you're not jumping into but, the RV or the van life yet. Uh, no, hashtag family. Like, I am not built for van life. I'm built for like battleship life. I think. Right, I just, good, yeah, yeah. lots of room. Bus right. life, yeah. yeah, I know. Boy, my wife was just. Uh, she went with her mom looking at RVs, and um, she made a video there. 
and she had me edit it. And I didn't realize when, when she gave it to me that the video was basically 30 minutes of her trying to sell me on an RV. Honey, you know, you could be here. And they're like, oh, man. So you could, yeah, but road trips are really good because they really help you be flexible. And I think um, going back to your point about the flexibility, you know, have multiple plans out there for every day you have because you may want to go to one site that might not be open that day. So it's always good to have, you know, a little bit more, a uh, little more things, not necessarily planned, but in the kind of ideas of things you could do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I agree. And uh, related to road trips, Scottman 895 Travel uh, says he's just been doing road trips uh, this year. And uh, Trip Hacks DC uh, says you shouldn't just have one backup plan, but you should have five <laughs> backup plans. Yes, yes. I've we've had a, we've had a number of fans that have had they were going to go to Italy, then it was they were going to go to New York, then it was Boston, then it was you know Florida, then it was okay. We're just going to drive North Texas, you know, because yeah, like, that's right. where the problem. But but you have to. I mean, that's one of the things, and it's not just the pandemic stuff that does that. We were in Wyoming and the wildfires. We had to we had to cancel some parts because it wasn't safe to go places. So, yeah, you know, having the backup plans is a smart thing. Thanks, thanks for PAX DC. Thanks, yes. Rob. <laughs> yes, thank you, Rob. Uh, Kathy from Australia says uh, she's been planning Hawaii for a long time, and I know she has. And she says uh, she's rebooked it for October 2021. So, uh, fingers crossed that Australia opens up so <laughs> that you can leave Australia to go to Hawaii. Um, so. Uh, I think we want to talk a little bit more about road trips uh, for tip number three. Uh, Mark, do you have any additional thoughts about road trips? Well, one of the things what we've seen is it hasn't been hard. Lots of places to have the, the the hand sanitizers and stuff, like the pump things everywhere. Yeah. But what I found is a bit more. It's still tough to find the wipes and stuff like that and Lysol. But what we actually do is we actually take all that stuff with us. So. When we go in, and I know we're going to talk about this later, but when we do our road trips, it's, you know, it's one person goes in to the to the gas station to get the snacks, or it's one person that goes in the restaurant, or we do the drive through if we can. You have kind of like we sacrifice one, so like we sacrifice me <laughs> to go in and do the stuff. But um, but Mark really, I'm mean, having you, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, I'm, I can be sacrificed. Thanks you know? for taking it's, one for the team. <laughs> That's right. But like, you know, for example, our kids, we have, you know, on the back seat of the of the driver's seat, and the passenger seat, we have the like organizers. So the kids have, you know, their, their switch, their DS, their phone, but then they also have their own hand sanitizer and they have a couple masks there just so they can, when they get in, they know psh, psh, and go, you know? And so having those things available for anybody out there, instead of one person having to do the squirt everywhere, Sometimes nicer to have that. That'd be one thing I'd say. Also, we've on all the road trips we've done this summer, we've taken a lot more of our own food with us uh, to kind of cut out. Maybe we don't have to go to um, you know the grocery stores. We get the Tetra Pak milk that you know you can oh, take and not free or something, you know? right? Or, or or is it well, milk? Well, we that's, have that. It's just the shelf well, stable the, milk, right? The shelf stable milk, and then yeah. we you know you get an almond milk or something like that. You can carry that around no problem. Um, so we have a lot of those things so when we go because the problem you think of with your road trips is a lot of the a lot of the hotels don't have breakfast right now. Right. Some are starting to have them again, but it's still really enough sad that breakfast. you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So sometimes it's better just to have some of the stuff with us. I know for our next trip, I mean, I've got a couple bag, a couple things of uh, granola and some cereal. So it's basically just a bunch of breakfast stuff to take care of. So yeah. think about the, the the little snack things you'd grab and the little breakfasts that were the easy things aren't as sometimes as simple as they used to be. So I think some of the other things that are really great about if you're planning a road trip is that there's actually less traffic on the roads now than there used to be. Um, and so yeah. that's one of the things we've really appreciated living near Los Angeles is trips that used to take us like two hours around LA as day mm -hmm. trips are now like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Oh, and wow. So, yeah. Um, that's great. It, it is yeah, great. Now that's, that, that is one thing we, we saw because we drove from basically Chicago to Savannah, Georgia, and we've done from – Chicago to Cheyenne and Idaho and Yellowstone and back at it was empty. Like there was the only, the only time you had any traffic, even, even we drove through Atlanta, which is notorious for like hellacious traffic was mm. totally fine. I'm like, this is, this is actually, I mean, they have like nine lanes and there's only three cars and in, in there nice. you're like, that's the way to do really, it. Really weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we have a tip from Jew about hotels, which is, and I assume flights, which is to don't prepay if you have the choice. Uh, Mark, what's what's your perspective on prepaying for hotels, rental cars, that sort of stuff? Are you a, you advise it or not? So when it comes to prepaying, I think it depends on how set you are in going some places and what their 
what their policies are. Like is some places, you know, if, if they have it, yeah, you can prepay because we give you like the $10 off. Um, but you have to cancel within five days. Like, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you still have a cancellation. I always check that because there's like no cancellation. I kind of avoid that, especially now, uh, just because you never know what's going to happen. But if it's places like I know I'm going to be like, it doesn't like, yeah, my, my kid's getting married. I am going to be there. For sure. Take for my money. Sure. I, I'm going to be there. You're going to, you know. And because this is one of the things we had um, some issues with some VRBOs. Uh, we were supposed to go to the Cayman Islands in March. Obviously, it didn't happen. And we couldn't get the money back. Couldn't get the money back. Couldn't get the money back. But then they're like, oh, well, if you rebook, you know, we can do this. And so we rebooked and actually rebooked for instead of, you know, 10 days, we rebooked for like four days. So we got like all this money back. We're like, wait, you couldn't give us our money back. Oh no, but you re you rebooked. And so since you had less days, we're like, Hmm, right, so right. we kind of figured out this way to the get loophole. more of the money Interesting. back. Yeah. yeah we, so that, that's one of the things is really read those rules. Cause that's one of the things is uh, with, when you have those deals, the reason there are deals because they're like, look, if it, bad things happen, they get to keep your money. And as much as you complain, look, that's what the dotted line says, and that's what the the terms of service says. That's what's going to happen. And I know a lot of a lot of airlines and, and places were really, really good when it came to helping people out when the pandemic happened. But we've been in this pandemic for seven or eight months. No one is going to give you a benefit of the doubt. No one's going to give you that stuff now because right. you're now booking with the, knowing the fact there is a pandemic. So don't expect to get like them like, oh, I'll get your money back. No way, uh, no problem. It'll be, look, it's going to be credit. Okay, so. Uh, Something to think jo about. Yeah, Jordan asks if it's better booking a hotel room on the day of. He says often he looks through Expedia and just buys it on the same day. So, what do you think about booking hotel rooms on the day of versus booking hotel rooms in advance? So, I've actually done this when I will fly out of Chicago with like an early morning flight. Um, for example, you know, I've been doing this since I defended my PhD. So, I had to fly out or first thing more. So, I went up to Chicago, got like a super nice hotel room for like 200 bucks because it was price line last minute and I was booking it at 3 p.m. for that night. Then yeah. it was like, you know, one tenth the price. I'm like, this is amazing. Right. Why do I have to fly out at four o'clock in the morning? This sucks, <laughs> you know, because I want to enjoy it. Um, but, I think you can get those, but one thing I will say is if you're going to places that are that it's a popular event going on or a popular destination, there might not be something out there. So you could end up really paying a lot more just trying to find something. Um, because I mean, you can always show up and get something in big cities, but it's you know, it's not necessarily gonna be cheap. But like the Expedia and the the price line, those last minute deals, you can actually save quite a bit. But some of those are just for like that night. And then if you're gonna stay like three or four nights, then like, oh wait, we might be able to charge more for it. So you might not have to get that great deal for like a three or four night stay, but if it's one night. I mean, you know what? And and one of the things you gotta realize is sometimes you just ask, like, hey. What kind of deals do you have? What are some of the discounts you have? And you might see that you might fit into something. Yeah, I I think for me, I I generally don't do the day of bookings because I'm picky and I kind of like to know that I'm going to stay in a hotel that has like quiet rooms, isn't next to the freeway, uh, yeah. and so I'm 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 like for me spa. Uh, it was you <laughs> sure? All right, yeah, root rooftop <laughs> swimming pool. Um, <laughs> So I thought I, I recognized you from that Hilton ad. <laughs> yes, that's me. That's me. Overwater bungalow. Um, right. Uh, but I, I also know from a lot of people who go to Las Vegas said, oh, they were just planning to get to Vegas and they were going to book a room when they got there. And they're like, oh, the rates are $500 a night because there's a convention in town. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, not, not probably not a lot of conventions right now, but certainly there could be things that you just aren't aware of that'll make the rates crazy expensive. Yeah. And so, so that's one thing we'll actually... Most of the time we have stuff like if we're going to Europe, usually we'll have, we'll go for like eight weeks. And so we'll have like the first kind of week or two booked and the last week or two booked. So we know we're going to go. And then we're booking like two weeks before where we're going to go. Yeah. Um, but then other times when we know we're going to like, you know, if we, we got a wedding in Italy, okay, we'll book the Airbnb in the town we're going to be in because we know um, it just kind of depends. But that, that's the only thing you have to worry about is if, if there's a, I mean, if you don't know, you don't know what festivals are out there. You might go to this little small town in Germany and it's, oh, it's the Apple Dumpling Festival. And everything is booked out for the next, you know, you have to go into Berlin for this, this, this happened to me actually once um, we, we were going there like, Oh, we'll go to the festival and then spend the night. Cause we found out about it. And they're like, Nope, nothing's available or it was stupid expensive. So we ended up taking a two hour train back to Berlin where we lived because we're like, well, guess we're not staying all day at the Apple Dumpling Festival. Right. But right. We had a lot of Apple wine, so it all worked out. But. That's good. That's good. So good times were still had by all. And, and I, and I, yes. And I think at least on that note, right, it's like if you book at least the day before, you know, then you can be like, okay, where do I need to go? Where do I need to go back to? It's often that like, mm 
oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to do my thing. And then at 10 o'clock at night, I'll figure out where I'm going to stay. And, and then it ends up being a park bench. Um, yeah. And not okay. every city likes you doing that. That's very true. All right. Uh, our tip number four for you for traveling uh, today and in 2021 is to plan on lots of a- outdoor activities because uh, lots of indoor activities around the world are still closed. You know, museums, movie theaters, theme parks, all, all those things. Even the ones that are open often don't have indoor things that are open. Uh, and so I know OC Girl and I, we've been doing a ton more um, outdoor activities, um, national parks, hikes, beaches. Uh, Mark, what are, what are some of your favorite outdoor activities? Since we the hiking we've done with the kids, that's actually been pretty fun to get them out and about. Uh, Jocelyn's actually done fly fishing uh, when we were in Idaho and by Yellowstone. Um, but our, it's usually the hikes in the state parks. Cause that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like we're like national park or, or, or bus. I'm like, no, there's some really beautiful state parks out there. Even, I mean, I know we're thoughts. We have Turkey run state park, which is about an hour drive from where we will live and people will go and they'll, they'll rent a cabin there and they'll go hiking there and it's beautiful, you know? And, and I think that's one of the things you got to realize is when you're looking at these outdoor activities, this is where you can kind of really get some of your staycation stuff in so you can be staying at home, but we can do something nearby. So like I said, we got Turkey run near us. We got a few other places we can go uh, to go visit and that's made life a lot easier uh, to do. I know, uh, our first trip we took during the pandemic was down to Georgia. We actually stayed on Tybee Island and we rented a, we rented a, a house. Well, it was, we didn't get, we ended up getting the whole house, but it was like two floors. One floor was, no one was there. Then we rented the second floor. And so we were right on the beach. So we would just go to the beach and come back. And like, we did not have nice. any contact with anybody. Yeah. And, but that was the whole point. It's like, look, we are doing this to, to do that. And so that's one of the things you got to think about. And, and that's why when you're looking at places to go on your vacation, especially when you start thinking about for next summer, because even if there's a vaccine, you're not going to get 7 billion people in the world vaccinated in one year. It's just not going to sure. happen. So for sure. you're going to have a lot of limitations in where you can go. So that's one of the things you want to start thinking about. It's like, hmm, what national or state parks I want to go to or what cities are more outdoors you can enjoy? I mean, think about it. when you're going to Italy, sometimes it's just in Paris, it's just walking around. And taking the architecture is what's so great. Going to New York, Boston. I mean, it's just like, it's just a cool place to be and just like walk around. Whereas other places like, no, you really got to go in to see stuff to really make it worthwhile going to. Otherwise you're like, wow, this city is just cement and glass. And eh, Right. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. Uh, Terry says the Grand Canyon and Monument, Monument Valley were amazing. Uh, yeah. they Yeah. That is gorgeous there. Terry, Terry and her husband, Mark went and they drove like, a bajillion miles in five days. <laughs> it was they, they they did a live feed from the Grand Canyon. I remember because they're they're friends of mine. I'm like awesome. That was a really cool trip they did. So. Uh, Rob uh, from Trip Hacks DC says indoor activities often require time tickets. Now, if you don't get tickets, it's going to be disappointing. That's a yeah. that's a good tip. And also with the time tickets, you have to look and see when you can get the time tickets because some places only let you get the time tickets the day before. So you got to be like nine o'clock in the morning on the phone or on the internet trying to get it. And some places it's reserved just for people staying on property, get the tickets for entrance. So if there's places you want to go, do your research beforehand. Don't just read the Google, what comes up on Google, because that might be from two years ago. Go to their website, call their number. I mean, we've called a lot of places be like, hey, are you actually open? Like, well, we are open, but we have limited hours and we have time tickets, but the time tickets is basically we have a hundred tickets for the day. So a hundred people could show up the first thing in the morning or they can yeah. come anytime during the day. Well, and so. I've even found like opening hours. It's like everything conflicts now. Like Google will say it's open at this time. Yelp says it's open at this time. Their website says it's open at this time. And then you get there and they're not even open. You know, it's like, well, oh, all right. Yeah. We're closed on well, Monday. And that, that's one thing. I, when I talk to businesses, I'm like, look, you need to have like Facebook on your main page right there. Have it in the picture saying this is your hours because people will be like, when are you open? Like right. we're open 24 hours a day. Yeah. But what, when are you open? <laughs> For sure. So, uh, but, um, Traveling the world says, uh, since they live in Illinois, uh, what are some of the cool outdoor things you've been to in Illinois and recommend? So you have, if you go to, like, for example, for me, I'm from actually Quincy, Illinois, and they have a bunch of historic homes you can go and see and just drive around. It's a beautiful, like, historic town. And you got Hannibal, Missouri, which is right across the river, Mark Twain's place, and they have a bunch of stuff going on there you can still do. Like, I was there last month and they still have the riverboat cruise going. So you could see that um, if you're looking to go up to Galena up in Galena in the North 
west of Illinois. That's that's more outdoor stuff. Uh, some a lot of the wineries are still open, so you can take in the foliage and some wine when you're there. And a lot of the wi- vineyards and wineries, it's outside, and so you're outside to get that you know social distancing. So there's some stuff there. Um, you can also go to like if you went down by Carbondale, there's a not, there's a state park, national park, not, not, state park I think. That they're not, I'm sure it's state or national park. A it's park. down by there with Lake a Park. There's a park. Yeah. Yes, there you go. There's a park down there you can go to. Uh, so there's a bunch of there's a bunch of lakes down in southern Illinois you can go to, and so there are options around here. Cool. Uh, Natalie's asking about the Yellow Productions T-shirt. Uh, you can check out the Yellow Productions Etsy shop. There's a link in the description below. I don't feel like I'm shamelessly promoting now because Natalie asked. Thank you very much. That's uh, right. And you all, right. all should get one because it looks great on everybody. And probably pairs well with a Walter's World shirt too. So that's uh, true. You can get Walter's World shirt, but we're at we're at Walter's World dot store. Dot so Walter's World dot <laughs> store. That's fancy here, so that that's people right. can see the whole logo. There, you're full screen now, Walt, Mark. So you can hold that up. There you go. Very good. So that one there. We have all kinds of fun stuff uh, out there. Yeah, Chichen Itza, not chicken pizza. We have. You know, we try to put some fun stuff in there. So yeah, we we we're all about having the right logos all over you, whenever you need them. Nice. Speaking speaking of drinking, what are you drinking in your Walter's World uh, jug there today? I have ice water with lemon in it. Ooh, lemon. Uh, today, because everybody Spice always asks. Man. Yeah, today I am drinking uh, a drink from Hui Lao Shan. This is a mango dessert place that my camera is not going to focus on it that close. Uh, but it's got like mango pudding, mango juice, coconut milk, and also like little tiny tapioca balls through a... Mm. Nice, huge straw. It's, it's like a it's like a dessert. Well, you had to have the huge straw, otherwise you're like, come on. Get through. <laughs> My favorite thing about this place is their straws are yellow, and so are their uh, spoons and forks. They're all yellow, so it's built cool. for me. Uh, all right, cool. Mark, what's our what's our no, next? Tip? Our next tip. Our next tip. Number five. Uh, plan on bringing your own cleaning supplies. I know I talked about that earlier, but um, one thing you have to realize is the hotels are not cleaning your room every day anymore. Uh, what they'll tell you, what we've seen, we've gone around, is they'll say, look, if you want to clean, we can come give you some, you know, the towels. We can change your garbage if you want. But the big clean, unless you're there for, like, more than three days, they're not going to do it um, because they. it's also for their, their personnel as well, for their safety. And so don't be a messy slob because you'll be living in your slop for, for the entire time you're there. So that's one thing to think about. Um, and, and one thing is, if you're this, this is one thing my wife did actually did a ton of research on before we did our first trip. She wanted to know what were the new procedures, what are you going to do. And actually, on the yeah. Trip Hacks Trip Hacks DC podcast, we talked about this, um, and that's one of the things that we say at some Airbnbs and VRBOs. And I know Airbnb and VRBOs like we have all these new cleaning procedures. I'm like, yeah, but no one's checking every day. Like the Hilton, like the manager goes around and checks, and if something's wrong, they're going to lose their job. Whereas Airbnb isn't going to houses every single day. So when Airbnbs are losing money, where do they, where do people cut costs? We don't know. Is it there? They're not, paying, you know, so you, they, maybe they're doing it themselves. And so that's why just for a personal preference and personal kind of feeling better about this, uh, what we'll do is when we go to hotels, uh, um, when we go to hotels, I go in, like always, I go in, check in, get the keys, get all the stuff together, come back in. And then I switch the key with my wife. I, she Actually, I give her the other key that I haven't had. Give that to her. She goes in with Lysol and the wipes, and she goes in and starts spraying everything down. You want to make sure every handle, remote control, if there's a refrigerator door, she's wiping all that stuff down. Um, and then I'm getting the, the stuff together with the boys. So by the time I get everything together and I bring the boys up, it, it's all clean when we get in there. So you walk in, you're like, ooh, chlorine clean. Hi, I don't know. <laughs> nice, nice. I know. It was funny. Like my, my youngest was like, wow, this place smells really clean. I'm like, yeah, your mom just – <laughs> <it." laughs> and, and I'm sure most of the places are okay, but it's just one of those like, do you feel comfortable? If there's something you can do to make yourself feel more comfortable, you should do it. And so that's what we do. Yeah. So – and like I was saying before, don't expect to find the wipes everywhere. So if you have stuff, bring it with you. Yeah, you that's it. That's that's a that's a great perspective, and and I think that even with cleaning, you know, and I, I won't speak for all hotel staff, but you know, I I think a lot of the housekeeping they they actually maybe don't even want to be in the room that long, so they're trying to like get through it quickly as well. Yeah. Um, uh, Alex, uh, s- since you mentioned uh, kind of like family and the two boys, uh, Alex asks, what is your favorite family trip that you've done? 
So my favorite multi-generational family was grandma, grandpa, me, my wife, and my kids. Actually, it was last year. We went to Rwanda and Tanzania. Uh, that was my favorite family trip because it was such an incredible experience. And it was just the six of us. Like, since we were six, that means, like, the, the Jeeps hold eight. So with six, they kind of, like, let you have the Jeep yourself. And so we had that. So it was, what was it, two and a half weeks, three weeks in Rwanda and Tanzania. So we went on safari in the Serengeti and Rwanda. And just, I mean, it was incredible. And we really got to spend a lot of time together. And that's one of the things I always push for people. like, look, don't leave your kids at home. Like a lot of people will say, oh, I'll wait till my kids in June, until they're like 13, 14, 15. Then, then when they appreciate it, I'm like, anybody that has a 13, 14, 15 year old knows they don't appreciate anything. <laughs> so... So, so it's better to take them when they're young. So traveling becomes part of their life. And then yeah. sometimes people will say, oh, well, you know, they won't remember it. I'm like, it's not about them remembering it. It's about you remembering it, you know? And so you have these experiences together. And so that's why we've had a lot of really great times. I know uh, we've had, so like, we already went to a trip on Iceland, which was fantastic. Um, we did a Brazil trip, which was really, really cool. Like the, the boys just made lots of friends. We were in Morocco last year, but no, maybe two years ago. And they made all these buddies playing soccer all around Morocco. Mm. And, and one of the kids contacted us and like, can Caleb come to my birthday party? I'm like, I'm sorry, dude, we're back in the U S now, you know? And so <laughs> there's just been a lot of really cool family trips. That's cool. Uh, on the note about cleanliness, drinky drinky asks if you wipe food containers down when you're traveling and eating out. So usually what we do if we're eating, like we'll do takeout all the time. I just, yeah, we, I mean, it's basically always take out. And I think in July we did wipe down like everything, like even the wraps for like a burger or something like that. Now it's more, we get the stuff in, we, we all do our hands and then we, we go to town on that. Um, so now it's not as, not as crazy because now they, they've, you know, they, they're like, oh, it doesn't last as long as we thought on surfaces and da da da. So yeah, so we're I not think we're as, as crazy with it. Yeah, we're, we're sort of on a similar perspective with eating out and the food that we get. Like, it comes in containers. The food was already in it, so we're not going to wipe those down, you know. But we do, as we take yeah. it out of the bags and all that stuff, use the hand sanitizer. And, um, yeah. It's you know. so like whenever – because I, well, if I go to the food and wife, we first thing we do, we come in, we wash our hands, do all these things. Yes. And then just, like, put the food, throw it away, wash hands again. Okay, now let's eat. So. Right. I, I will say maybe that, like, if there's a point that we're maybe the, the, the sketchiest on sometimes in the to-go packages are, like, the forks or spoons that they've tossed in there. Because you're like, yeah, where my, were those? And how many people <laughs> touch them, you know? Yeah, that's what, like, I'm like, w with the sauces. And they give you the sauce. You're like, ooh, usually I just, like, rip a little bit off and do this. I'm like, eh, I guess I'm going to go ketchup free on these fries right. for a while. So. Right. No, I do uh, understand. So what, what what's our next tip? Uh, well, let's get this question first, and then we'll go to our oh, next sorry. tip. Uh, Goomer asks, uh, Mark, what are your favorite credit cards for travel? He just received a Chase Sapphire Preferred card. So I know the Chase is a really popular – the Chase Sapphire Preferred is actually a really popular one. Back when we actually used to travel, um, I always used my Delta American Express because I just like – I get the miles. I get all the upgrades. So for me – I mean, we would get upgraded. I mean, if we if there was four legs of a flight, we would get three of the legs upgraded nice. at least. So it would pay for itself like the first flight. So I usually use that. Um, but I always say it's like with those credit cards, it's got to be something that's worthwhile to you. Like my parents, they use their Sam's Club credit card because they get 5% back or 3 or 5 It's either 3% or 5%. It's like really big cash back because the cash is more important to them because they only travel two or three times a year. Whereas, you know, I'm, you know, 20 times a year, it makes a difference for me because, oh, I'm getting all those upgrades. So make sure you're picking something that works for you. And if you're looking to get a credit card, whether it's United with their Visa and Chase, or if it's Delta with the American Express or, or American with their MasterCard or whatever, make sure you're looking at the airport that's nearest to you that you're going to use. Like for me, there's no point in me getting the British Airways card because right, because no British, British Airways doesn't fly through there, right? Yeah, there, there's no point in me getting a Southwest card or an Allegiant card or a Spirit card because they're not going where I'm going to go, and so that's what you really have to think about. Because it may be a great deal, but if you're not going to use the airlines, it's not really worth it. Yeah, great perspective. Uh, and I'll just say my my favorite uh, is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. That's kind of my everyday carry. That's like the next one up. I like that one because it has the three ultimate reward points per dollar. Uh, and I, I'm just saying, well, we're not traveling, but I'm, you know, right. I'll have a big Still bank gotta pay of the bills. rewards points. Yeah, that too. Still exactly. Uh, 
All right. Uh, so tip number six. Uh, so we were talking about cleanliness, bringing cleaning supplies. Tip number six uh, is to bring extra masks and extra hand sanitizer. You know, in this day and age, you need a mask uh, everywhere you go. And masks break, masks fly away, you lose them. You don't want to be in a situation where you're like, ah, we, one person, somebody can't go in because they don't have a mask. Uh, and, and then hand sanitizer, you know, it seems like every place has hand sanitizer, except when you need it or want it, and that's when the hand sanitizer's empty, right? I don't know, you know, you put it under the infrared yeah. thing, and you're like, this it's like, <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> it's like you're getting gas, you're like, ah! No. <laughs> right. That's right. That, that's I got to right. put everything away. That, that's right. Yeah. And, and actually, I'm I, so I don't consider myself a glove freak, but I, I do actually carry gloves for gas. So I've got like gloves in my glove box. I can use fill up the gas and throw it away. What's what's your what's your take on gloves, Mark? Are you are you a you glove it up for anything? I, I have, just, I have, just the cleaning in the I hotel, have, maybe. I have a pack of gloves in both of our cars, and when we but I don't use them. I go get gas. I go get gas. I just, psh, man, I, I mean, it's yeah. like hand sanitizer right when I walk in. And if it's, if it's one of the times where I'm just getting gas and Jocelyn's there, I'll literally open the door and she'll be standing there with the thing waiting to squeeze it in my nice. hand. That's good. And then do that. So, uh, so. Ali dreams says the two best channels that I always go to for tips, uh, along with California through my lens. Thank you so much for all the help you guys give us. Thank you, Allie. We appreciate That's it. That's awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, all right, Mark, what's tip number seven? Tip number seven, we've gone over this one before. Always check your opening times and closing times because they do adjust. And like I said before, you need to call them to make sure because it may be 7-Eleven. You're like, hey, it's called 7-Eleven. Yeah, that doesn't mean their hours are 7-Eleven anymore. Um, and the thing is, is they're, they might be open till six, but they might only be letting people in until five or four. So you want to definitely make sure you're doing that. So now, and uh, I think, and I, the call, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go on, Chris. No, I was going to say, because that leads kind of into the, tip number eight is really, you know, looking at if you're planning on eating at restaurants, you're making sure you're making that reservation because they may not like you look on Google. It's like, oh, it doesn't look very busy because nothing's going to look busy right now because it's all reservation based. And I know you have some other stuff you want to say about that, too, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I think related to reservations, we really like in the U.S. to use the Yelp reservation feature. Actually, it's not even a reservation. It's a wait list. So, um, yeah, as Mark said, if you look on Google and you're looking at those bars to see how busy they are, well, you know, maybe they're only seating 50 percent or 25 percent or all the seatings outside. And so the people who are there aren't even there as part of Google knows. Uh, but we've been doing the the waitlist feature. So if a restaurant has a waitlist, you know, we can put ourselves on the waitlist and then roll up and be like, hey, I added my name to the list 20 minutes ago. And they're like, well, in that case, you get seated right away, um, you know, as opposed to all the other schmoes that have been here. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, a, a, oh, I love you, Chris. You're yeah. awesome, dude. <laughs> and uh, a, another, another thing uh, that also I just like to do, even if I'm eating at restaurants, if their restaurants are kind of like fast casual restaurants, you know, I see if they have like an order online feature. And if they do, yeah. you know, order it online ahead of time and, and get it there. Um, and, and that's one thing is restaurants have gotten a lot better at that, like getting it all kind of put together. Yes. So that's, that's one of the nice things that's kind of come about. Yeah, actually, I really like uh, – so everybody knows I'm a huge fan of In-N-Out Burger. I also like Shake Shack. And I will say Shake Shack's tech is a lot better than In-N-Out Burger's tech. And that, you know, I found with Shake Shack, like seven minutes before you go, if you put the order in online, it's like ready to pick up as soon as you get there. Oh, that's um, cool. Rob does point out uh, that cheap masks definitely break and always at the worst possible time. I've, I've seen it more than once. It's it's sort of hilarious. It. <laughs> My, my pack of cheap masks, my brother-in-law, he I, like they work for me, but he picks out the ones that always break. He's got that. He puts it on, and then if he takes off and puts it back on, it, get, like, it breaks first time. So, yeah. yeah, so that's why we actually have masks on Walt's Rule Store. We actually have them with like a neck strap, so you can just take it off and it lays there. Because I was always like, this is disgusting. It's laying on the table with people were doing stuff on so then it's just right there yes some of my food falls in there but you know it's just a snack Save for later, later. But at least Save I later. Have something. that's right that's right so actually I, I saw the video where you rolled those out and i was like that's a pretty cool idea to have it like hang on your neck as on your neck as I'll opposed to you know like i've seen people put their masks like up here and it's like is that like a like a unicorn horn or something you know yeah yeah no that that was i mean when we we started that i'm like this is too good 
Like I'm mm-hmm. like such a fan for it. And it's funny. It's funny because people have actually stolen our masks. I'm like, dude, they're the masks we're using. So like I had to order more of my own masks because like people have taken them. Wow. Us. Wow. That's bold. That's bold. I know. But I'm like, I'm like where, how they get, I'm like, I don't, I don't understand how they got them. That's just right? so crazy. Like right. we went on our trip. I think we had six with the straps when we went on our trip and we got home with two. So that's four. Bizarre. Bizarre. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, what's our what's our next tip, Mark? So n- tip number nine. So um, another old term you can look at is doing picnics. You know, like we we're talking about, you know, like you said, in and out burger, you're seven minutes, pick it up, then head to the park or head to a place to be. Um, and this is actually one of the things that we, we actually really enjoyed. We actually got to see more of some towns because we just kind of sat in the park. We were in Jackson Hole and we picked up some food while we were walking around. Went to the, there's a square, a park square, whatever, in the center of town where it's got these antler arches you, you know what i'm talking about and so we're just like sitting there like well shoot let's just have our bakery stuff here for lunch yeah. and so we just sat down at the park and watched tourists go by and then went and got our huckleberry ice cream and everything and it was really nice but i mean that, that's what you're saying is like ordering ahead and, and kind of planning that as part of we're going to go and that's one of the fun things is we were looking hey where could we eat so like when we were going to grand tetons we knew that because we had driven by the day before we're like oh before we get there there's a few spots you can you can picnic so let's let's grab the food on the way out of town and so we got some sandwiches and so we went out of town and got to the picnics had that with the you know the tetons right there and you know the beautiful mountains and stuff it worked out really nice so so something to really kind of think about also one thing you look at is when you're looking at these ordering apps um you know use some coming to your address there's some that'll actually come you can actually a pickup spot so you can be like we're at the main square in jackson hole i'm the fat guy with the beard and no hair you know and a ponytail and sure. it's funny because i've actually done that before it's it's fat bald guy with ponytail and beard and blue shirt and, nice. and like you'll see them you'll see them drive up and they're looking and they'll see me and you just see their face go that's funny yeah there you are <laughs> I love it. I love it. No. Um, you know, some some of the things we we like to do when we're picnicking out uh, is we use the Google Maps satellite feature to like look for grassy areas or look for parks. So we'll yeah. look at the restaurant we want to eat at, put it in satellite mode, and be like, "What's some grassy place around it?" And we've actually taken to like in our car, we've always got a couple beach towels, a picnic mat, and a bag of plates, bowls, cups chopsticks forks spoons because that's the other one at like these takeout places like sometimes they'll give it to you and you'll be like okay can, do you have any plates that i could eat this on no i don't have yeah. plates do you have any utensils <laughs> yeah. no i'm like how yeah. do you expect us to eat it and they're like well we figure you'll take it home and you're like i'm not home <laughs> yeah we got we got spaghetti in um in cheyenne <laughs> <laughs> was, but like here you go and where there's a there's a square in the da- in downtown cheyenne and so like i come out and one, one kid had pizza then where's pasta there was spaghetti and there was another there was some other stuff and i sit down i'm like mother oh <laughs> so i'm using the crust yeah, yeah crust yeah, that's that. better than your hand you know right <laughs> exactly which i think in the end i probably would have been cleaner if i just would use my damn hand but you know <laughs> What are you going to do? You were trying to be refined. Uh, Beast Gamer wants to know how, how many masks you carry. I, I think I think you answered that on your last trip was you had six. But did you have just those? Did you have other ones? Or? Well, no. I, we have, we, I have more. I had six of the ones with the next rep. So right now we're packing for another trip, and we have like a stack this high. So what I'll do is I will have two. Like for each of the kids, there'll be two there. Because I figure there's one, and then they'll forget it, and so there's another one. So there's those two, there's another two, and then there's two for my wife and two for me up front. So there'll be eight in total. Then I keep a few extra in, like, the glove compartment, not the glove, the console of my car. So those ones are ones they are clean. They're, you, like, I right now there's two. The one's from the university I work at, one's one of mine. That's just down there. I'm like, just in case. And then my other car, we actually have – it has a bigger console. So it has, like, a 20-pack of those disposable things. But then I usually have two sitting on the gear shifter of the other car. Cool. Yeah, I so we, we, every, everybody knows I like In and Out. I keep my masks in an In and Out Burger box. So you can have the smell whenever you want. 
There you go. That's right. It's just I yeah I always get a lot of them, and so when the, if the box get dirty, I can throw them away. But I'm like, I just, it's my mask box in the back of the car. Uh, Ram yeah. asks if we're familiar with Room Raider on Twitter, they should rate your current backgrounds. I wonder what score you'll both get. Well, so people can see our full rooms. Let's see. There we go. That's Mark and Mark's room, and uh, you'll notice he. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I got to show you my favorite award. What's up there? My Tell my my greatest dad in the world award that my son made for me when he was like six. It's a WWE belt he made for me out of cardboard, so I had to have that frame because I'm like, there was a time you liked me. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's cute. So, uh, and then that's the the Yellow Productions room right there, or one of the Yellow Productions rooms, the room that we're in today. Part uh, part of part of the empire. There you go. That's <laughs> right. Part of the empire. Uh, all right. So, um, in addition to picnics, uh, we we talked about this one a little bit more. But our tip number ten for you uh, is when you're out on travel today in 2021, or as somebody said, "What are you talking about 2021? Don't you mean 2020 part two? Um, to divide and conquer, or divide and stay safe. You know, not everybody has to go every place at the same time. Some people can stay in the car. Some people can go ahead. Uh, you know, Mark, you talked about your uh, favorite check-in process. I mean, we certainly do that, you know, when it's food, right? And I'm I'm also generally the sacrificial lamb, right? You know, about like, Chris, you go and you get Take the food. Take one for the team. That's, that's <laughs> right. Uh, I'll be here. I'll, I'll scope out the picnic spot. Uh. <laughs> How altruistic. <laughs> Um, Brian says, if there's one positive thing during this pandemic, it's the discovery of you both. Thanks for bringing the good vibes. Well, thank you. Thanks, thank Brian. That's awesome, dude. Thanks, man. And uh, Eric says, I love you guys. You are very different personalities, but I love your different candidness. I appreciate it. And thank that's you. one thing is I think you all should know that Chris is awesome. I've been following Chris since he had about 45,000 subscribers and I've always enjoyed his stuff because I appreciate all of his honesty and like, just, this is what it's like. Have a good time. No BS kind of stuff. I've always appreciated that. So when he asked me to be on, we were talking about this over a few live feeds. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And we finally got it to work. So I was really pumped because I think you're awesome too, buddy. Oh, well, thank you, Mark. And uh, I mean, you definitely know, and everybody knows, I, I think you're awesome. And so I'm, I'm glad we could finally make this happen. I've been seeing a lot of people in the chat going like, you know, oh, this is the, this is, this is what we've been waiting for. And I'm, I, as you say, I'm, I'm glad we finally did it. You know, it's, uh, it's another thing about, you know, uh, COVID bringing people together, right? To be like, oh, well, maybe it's hard right. for us to get together in person, but uh, right through the magic of technology. Well, I'll awesome. be, I'll be, well, hopefully I'll be out your way in May this year. Okay, is so that uh, for like for a vid summit? Yeah, right on. Sounds good. Well, we should we should do something in person, assuming that the world is, you know, still uh, there. supports us to do that. Yes, uh, we can get two camera angles. We're together, but we're six feet apart. Don't worry. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, okay, tip number eleven. What do we got for tip number eleven, Mark? So tip number eleven. Um, one thing you want to look at is though there's deals out there to be had. The deals are a bit different than what we're used to. Um, you know, we're used to like, oh, I can get these things. It's not the same because since lower prices aren't necessarily getting people to travel because no one's traveling right now, deals are coming, but they're not necessarily that, but you can still find some things like, you know, if you're looking at Vegas going there Monday through Thursday, yeah, you can get some good deals. But one of the things you have to worry about with Vegas is some of those hotels now are closing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they're only open Thursday through Sunday. So you make sure you're checking out these things. If you're the ones showing up last minute, think you're going to get it. Some places are just saying, you know what? We don't have enough people open today, so we're just not open. And I'm sure some of you've had that at, at stores you've gone to or restaurants you looked at, like, oh, I thought they were open today. Like, yeah, nobody was here, so we closed early. So something to think about. But I have seen when I've been booking – not necessarily VRBOs or Airbnbs, but with hotels, I have been finding that the traditional rate that I'm used to getting, I'm finding stuff, the usual $120 hotel room, like your Hampton Inn or something like that, I'm now getting for like in the $88, $90 range. So I am seeing a discount that way. Uh, so something to look out for. Um, also, don't never forget, what even if you're never going to use that hotel chain again, excuse me, sign up for their like member plus whatever. I mean, dude, it's just another spam email you're going to get, but it can give you a discount of 10 bucks here. And you know what? 10 bucks and you're gone for 10 days. That's a hundred bucks. That could be a night in a hotel. And it's little things like this. These, those deals you can find that can help you, you know, travel a bit longer and make the bucks go a bit farther. 
Yeah. So some things there. Uh on that, on that notion of Vegas, you know, Monday through Thursday, what I think is interesting, though, is that, like, they've had to get the room rates so low that they've got to a point where their their hotels are just like, you know, it's not even worth it to be open anymore. And we're seeing, like, so many of the Vegas hotels just go, like, you know what, Monday, Thursday, we're closed because we just we can't get this cheap enough to get yeah. people to stay here. Um, and I think it's I think we should talk about travel restrictions. You want to talk about that one? Or? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think it's also, you know, we talked about this a little bit when we talked about being flexible. Uh, but it's important to, to know the travel restrictions of the places you're going to go. Obviously, I've done a lot of videos about Hawaii's reopening. Uh, and, you know, what, what I didn't talk about in those videos was how many people arrived in Hawaii because they heard it was open, but didn't realize that they had to have a COVID-19 test to not quarantine. And so then it was like, well, welcome to Hawaii. Where's your COVID test? I don't have one. Okay, well, enjoy your hotel room for 14 days or go home. And you and you really have to remember what what kind of COVID test because like I get tested twice a week at work, but we do the little little like they say you we're not spitting, we're dribbling. Oh, we dribbling! That's dribble the, into the that's thing. the proper word. Yeah. Okay, that's the proper word. And and but the thing is that's not that's not the antibody test whatever because my kids when I get them tested they have to go through the brain kind of thing you know through the nose. Yes. and so theirs is different than mine. Um, and so like, there's like the official, oh, they could go travel mine one though. I'm still getting tested twice a week. I would have to go get that one because that's the one that's going to be recognized at different places. So make sure you see which one it is. Cause you know, Chris is right. There's a lot of people like I got here and I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, he, and even like getting there and stuck, one of the like, this was a, you know, news out of Hawaii was that Hawaii has a, you know, it's not just a type of test, but it has to be one of the approved partners. And then when you get the oh. test results, you have to upload it to the Hawaii app a day before you go. Now, Hawaii has been saying if you just bring the printout, they'll accept it when you get there. But there was a family who got tested at CVS, one of Hawaii's partners. They didn't upload it in the app beforehand, so Hawaii didn't have a chance to review it before. When they got to the Hawaii airport, they presented their printed test, and they were told, sorry, that's not an approved test. Uh, quarantine or go home. So they went home. And then got an email as soon as they got home that said, Aloha, we've reviewed your test results and we made a mistake. You actually don't have to quarantine, you know, go out and explore Hawaii. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's a drag. See, and, and, and that's the thing is you, you never know. That's why I know we were looking at doing the two week quarantine. I mean, I know UK put it, it was back on lockdown, but yeah. we were looking at doing that, you know, going to the UK, just quarantining for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then going to travel, and that's the thing is we were going to plan that into the into the thing, and like we're looking at traveling this next summer, and whatever we're doing, I'm already planning in first two weeks quarantine. I mean, I yeah. imagine there might be more of the test and release kind of stuff for sure, but just in case, I'm I'm, I'm planning yeah. like, look, first two weeks, we're going to be the same. Like we got to find a place for two weeks, and even if we don't have to quarantine for two weeks, just in case we have to, it's Absolutely. like look. I find a place we can be based. So in case we can go out, we have something to go. But in case we can't, you have that kind of set up. So yeah, I think I think that's a great perspective. Uh, Emmett says, "Wait, do we need to test before we fly domestically?" Uh, depends where you're going domestically. Depends right? where you're going. Yeah, Hawaii, Alaska, both require. Uh, COVID-19 test before you go there, and that's domestically, assuming you're talking about domestically in the U.S. Yeah. Okay, so, let's go on to uh, tip number 12, which is um, if you're flying and you want a middle seat, uh, not all airlines are blocking middle seats anymore, actually, because that's another one. They've been losing too much money, and they're like, we need to fill yeah. these up. And there's also been a lot of studies that have come out to say that – yeah, you know, it's not really the person sitting next to you on the plane, or it's pretty hard to catch it. And so lots of airlines are, yeah. are filling flights. Um, but if that doesn't make you comfortable, then you'll want to make sure you book an airline that's still blocking them. Delta still is through the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can buy a second seat. Airlines actually allow you to do that. Many people don't know it, but but you can buy a second seat. Um, mm -hmm. Mark, have, have, And I will you, say is go ahead. You, if, if you buy the second seat, and someone, you know, how some people are like, oh, I'm going to stretch out and take this or I'm going to move to here or something like that. Because, you know, maybe you buy the aisle 
or you buy the window and the middle, and then someone comes and sits in the aisle. They're like, oh, "I'm gonna put my stuff here." You're like, "No, no, no, right. I bought That's this." That's my seat. You you can yeah. be you can be a jerk about it. Like, no, this is my. I paid the money for this, and they know that it's it's assigned to you. So you'd be like, "I'm moving over." Then you know you can kind of like take the middle seat and do that because I have seen where people like got the two seats and someone tries to take it. And they're like, "No, no, no." Yeah, I paid the extra five hundred bucks for the seat, so I have two. Especially if you're a heavier passenger, you know, sometimes we need a little bit of extra room. So, for sure, for sure. Some to look at. Uh, let's go on to tip lucky number thirteen. So number thirteen, one that can be very important, but also could make you a lot of enemies on the plane. Bring food and drink for yourself on your flights because they are not doing the food service so much. I mean, it might be a can of coke and a bag of pretzels maybe not always sure that you're going to get something it's kind of like the hotels and the breakfast there might be something but there might not and there's probably not going to be alcohol dang it so make sure you bring your own food and drink uh when you're coming on i mean don't don't bring on the burger king because people get pissed off because it stinks up the whole thing i mean on an out burger people might not be as upset but yeah, you know, in an out burger they'd be like you have to bring that we understand you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I understand it is a souvenir from coming to California. You have that's to bring right. it back with you to show your yeah. friends. Be like, oh. that's right. it's like when people like walk around with their Tiffany bag, though they're not what, bought anything from Tiffany's. Like, I, I, I put my McDonald's and my In-N-Out burgers. So yes, like, yes. Special. So, but I mean, that's one of the things you really have to think about is, especially if you've got kids, you got to make sure you're bringing food for them because they get hungry and you also get hungry. Because I know we're looking at, I mean, if you're doing domestic LA to New York, what is that, four hours, five hours? I mean, that's a long flight and you're not on there. Make sure you have some stuff um, that you can take with you. And, and yes, you'll have to buy it at the airport where it's overchar, overpriced, but at least you have something. Right. You know? So, a, a question I often get from people is, Chris, is is air travel safe? Uh, and Harvard released this 187 page study last week, and I, I just I want to read one sentence from it that I specifically wrote down so I, I don't mess it up. This Harvard study concluded air travel quote, is as safe or substantially safer than the routine activities people undertake during these times, end quote. Um, you know, I'll say do do with that what you wish, um, but, uh, you know, at least as far as the experts are looking at it, uh, air travel on big, wide-body planes um, is as safe as the other stuff we do today. Yeah, and that's one of the things I know we're, we're going to be flying again in the new year. I mean, people are like, well, why aren't you flying now? I'm like, because we're going for four week road trips in the US. So like if I was going to Europe, I would fly, but I'm in the US so I can see, cause we have friends along the way. There's places we can go along the way, but you know, I, I'm not, I'm not worried at all. I will take my family flying now. I'm not, I mean, obviously with our masks and everything, but I mean, one yeah. of the things is we always wipe this stuff down before, like we would get on and, and my wife, cause when we, when we get on, wife will go on first and then I'm dealing with the kids, getting them on, and then she will already wipe down the kids' screens and their tray tables anyway. That's why it's funny when the airlines are like, we are now doing extra cleaning. I'm like, you mean you're actually cleaning? Right, right, finally, <laughs> finally. Yeah, and actually, so that was actually what I said at the beginning of this pandemic when like airlines finally started saying, we're finally doing this, and that's like, you should have been doing that all along, you know? I know, because it's not like they're doing like super amazing, like, wow, we're we're – radiating the entire plate. No, we're just like wiping stuff down. I mean, like, oh, you know, like the stuff my mom would yell at me if I was a kid and didn't clean up after dinner. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we're, we've are we got about five minutes left in our stream. Uh, I want to take a few questions in rapid fire sure. Q&A. We need to roll the Q&A video, though. Fellow explorers, oh. it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. And actually, we've got an answer. So, uh, so fancy. Yeah, so rapid fire question. Oh, I got to see the. <laughs> I got to see the question thing going up there. That's right, the question thing. I was always yes. impressed by that. I was mm -hmm. impressed with that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Diane says, "We may be flying from DC to Las Vegas. Do you feel that flying first class is worth it?" Uh, anytime you fly first class, it's worth it. <laughs> it's, I agree. Well. It's, I mean, I, I, I honestly, I only buy economy tickets and then get upgraded to stuff. Um, but DC to Vegas, I mean, that's what four hours. If Rob like Tripax, he probably yeah. knows. Um, I mean, that's that's not a short flight. That's a longer flight. So if you if you are taller or you're bigger or you just want a little more space, I, I think it would be worth it if money's not an issue. Eddie says, "Book Paris for next Memorial Weekend." Do you think that will be a go? Love both your channels. 
Hey, Eddie. Um, I think I think there will be some kind of test and release kind of stuff where you have to test before you go, and then they'll do a rapid test probably when you get there. It might be you have to stay someplace for a few days, or you have to check in after a few days. I know for us, what we're looking to do for next summer going to Europe is I, we've already talked, and we're thinking we'll just go to one country in case different countries have different rules. So we're going to stay, you know, six to eight weeks in Italy and just do a lot of Italy videos. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I can't guarantee you anything, but I would have to imagine how things have gone with treatments and testing and things that I would think you probably can still get Paris for next Memorial Day weekend. But, I, you know. I, I concur with that magic eight ball level of looking at the future because that's all, all we're looking at right yeah. now. Um, Mark, did you love going to Portugal? Yes. Um, for those who didn't know, I did my PhD in Portugal. I live in Lisbon for five years and loved it. And I actually go back occasionally. I take students. Usually every two or three years, I'll take a group of about 25 students back to Portugal. Obviously not this year. Um, but we're, we're planning to go back because um, since all the study abroad programs have been canceled, all these universities, I already set up trips for two for 2022, two for 2023, just uh, so students know that there's some stuff out that I look forward to. Very cool. What what part of Portugal did you live in when you were there? I live in Lisbon. Right. I was Very at cool. the – at the time it was the Technical University of Lisbon. Now it's part of the University of Lisbon. And then I worked at the uh, new Nova, which is like the new University of Lisbon. I, I love the trams that they have in Lisbon, particularly because they're yeah. yellow. Uh, Emmett <laughs> wants to know, uh, what's the overseas version of Vegas? So I would say you have a few. You've got Macau, uh, which is the Vegas for mainland China, and it is crazy, way more crazy than Vegas. Um, if you're looking in Europe, um, Riga is kind of an under-the-radar mini Vegas kind of thing. Um, it can be interesting if you earn too much money, though. From my experience, I didn't win too much money. My buddy did, and we had some interesting conversations trying to get out. Uh, but that was a few years ago. So, uh, But Vegas has got that one there. I know people are like, oh, Monte Carlo. But I, I thought Riga was easier, more more be able to handle it. Um, yeah, so those are two I would definitely say off the top of my head. Yeah, I think one more, if you're going to the Asia side of the world, is Macau. Uh, Macau is the Las yeah. Vegas of Asia, yeah. for sure. And actually, it it really is the Asian version of Vegas, because you go there and there's a Venetian hotel and there's a Wynn hotel. The Venetian in Macau mm -hmm. is actually bigger than the Venetian in Las Vegas. Uh, Michelle says, I'm traveling to Los Angeles from Tampa tomorrow. Where can I go these days with COVID? Uh, I'll say, Los Angeles still has a lot of stuff that's really closed a lot of it uh like the big attractions are closed disneyland is closed universe studios is closed you can go places that are outside you can go to the beach you can hike up to the hollywood sign you can look around hollywood boulevard the brand tar pits are the tar pits open the tar they're outside so uh i don't think the museum's Sorry. open but i think that you can go see the tar i want to see the tar damn it the tar pits That's are all awesome. I want. <laughs> the tar pits are awesome i love that as an attraction. that's one of those like weird and wacky things uh <laughs> esther wants to know how miserably cold is chicago in winter miserably miserably <laughs> miserably you walk like when the wind comes and it's because there's the lake effect wind and stuff like that but it's because you have all the, the the high rises and skyscrapers and so the wind it's like a wind tunnel and so you'll literally walk at like this angle yeah like that's... into the wind oh right. it's brutal yeah. it's brutal it's brutal i'm not gonna lie to you it's brutal I was, uh, I've, I've never done winter in Chicago and you might say winter in DC, Good. you might say winter in DC is weak, but I was in DC the year that Obama took office and there was a snowpocalypse that closed the government for like a whole week. And I remember that's when the oh, snow, that, yeah. yeah, it was coming sideways, you know, and it's like jeans and sideways snow, really bad combination. Cause you know, yeah. snow sticks on jeans. That's what a San Diego yes, boy does. learns. Yeah. Yes. All right. Does. Well, uh, we are almost out of time, but there's always one thing we do at the end of these live streams. Fellow explorers, it is now Q and A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. Q and A time. It is Q and A time. Q and A time. All right. So Still? my Q and no, that's that was the wrong one. Yes, it's the time <laughs> you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. Those two buttons on this controller are right next to each other, so I'm I'm glad I'm glad somebody's paying attention. Uh, all right, so Your friends you will are cool, win. my friend. Good, uh, you will win a yellow production shirt. I'll ship to you anywhere in the world if you answer this question correctly. And the question is about something Mark said, and the question is, 
where did Mark do his PhD? You have to name the city and the country. And if you're the first person that drops the city and the country that Mark did his PhD, uh, then you will win a Yellow Productions crew shirt. While we're doing that, Mark, if there's anybody new here to you, and I've seen at least one who said, hey, I've just subscribed to Walter's World, uh, tell people how they can find you and what they'll find when they get there. Sure. So... Uh, if you go to, if you look on YouTube, look up Walter's World with an L. Uh, actually, very nice that he put it down right, 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 right there. there. Yeah. Um, you, you'll find me on there, my, my round head smiling and, and talking about videos like what you don't do in a certain place when you travel, the culture shocks you'll have when you go there, five things you love and hate, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, all the good stuff. Just look up Walter's World and, and we'll be there. And I appreciate anybody that subscribes. All our subscribers have come on here to say hi to Chris. And I know a lot of people cross pollinates. That's really cool. So glad that we can bring us together because it's been a really cool thing. So thank you, Chris, for the invitation. It's been fun. I love it, and thank and thank you for being here. We will we will have to team up again in the future. But looking out in the chat, I, I, s I see. And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. And so uh, Mark Stanford Bridge says Lisbon, Portugal. Is that the correct answer? That is the correct answer. Congratulations, Stanford Congratulations. Bridge. Congratulations. Uh, you can message Chelsea me on fan. Facebook okay. with your address and what size you want, or you can send me an email to chris at yellow.net with two Ws. Um, well, again... Mark, thank you very much for joining. Uh, it's been a pleasure, uh, as usual. Have I don't fun, say, buddy. yeah, I don't say goodbye because I'm going to see you all on the next video. Uh, but Mark, do you have any final parting words for the live stream today? I hope everyone's doing well. I know it's a tough time out there, but we're getting through it. We'll get through it together. We'll all be traveling again one day. So just hold out for the future. It'll be all better one day. Don't worry. Abs absolutely. All right. Keep on traveling, everybody. Bye.